if I am, I'm not vocab Malone, and I come in contact with some Hebrew Israelite or some variation thereof, what should I expect? And then how shall I, what, what, what are some things that I should make sure that I mention to them? If I, if I want to have this, because the Bible says, sanctify Christ in your heart and always be ready to give a defense. And so uh, how do we do so? Well, um, I think it's so important to ask questions. You know, behind me, I have this banner for a, a book I wrote called Street Level Apologetics. And in it, I try to show people how to how to ask questions that can help get a dialogue rolling and ask questions that help you understand where a person's coming from. So it's really important just to try to understand what they believe first and be willing to correct if you misunderstand something they believe, right? So that's really important. Um, and I really want to emphasize just doing that because you don't want to criticize something that they don't even believe, right? And that's an easy mistake to make. They would usually say that that's what I do, but I try not to do that because what's the point if it's built upon lies, it won't last. So, the key thing is really asking questions is, 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 is to be able to do that so you can know what they believe before you interact. Um, this is more in a one on one or smaller kind of, you know, situation that's chill. Corey, if you're talking about out on the street, it's a whole different ball game, right? It's a whole different set of circumstances usually. <laughs> but the reason why I emphasize trying to understand what they believe is because most of us don't understand what they believe. If we think they're all the same, we'll be wrong, but we can catch a few things. So you don't have to understand everything they believe to be able to interact because there's usually still some problems there. And the reason why I emphasize that, Colossians 4, 5, 6, walk in wisdom toward outsiders, making the best use of the time. Let your speech always be gracious. Season with salt so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. See, there's a like the distinct individuality of where you know how to answer each individual person. And so that's why I would encourage that first and foremost. But I mean, what are the big things, right? It's God and the gospel. God and the gospel. Who is God? What is the gospel? And so unfortunately, most Hebrews lights are wrong on those two big issues. Most Hebrews lights are non-Trinitarian. They do not believe Father, Son, and Spirit eternally exist as three distinct yet co-equal co-eternal co-powerful persons however you want to define the trinity as long as it's actually trinitarian and not modalism yeah <laughs> they don't believe that and that's because most hebrews lights believe that jesus christ was a created being and most of them do not believe the holy spirit is an individual person a distinct person in any way now when we say person we don't mean human we're not saying the holy spirit's a human only Jesus was incarnated. Person is a way to identify distinct personality. Now, Dow's understanding of the Trinity, you don't hear them talk about a lot about. I feel like they're a little closer to modalists, but I could be wrong on that. And that's part of the problem. I've listened to hours of straightway teaching and interviews, and I've never heard a clear discussion of the Trinity. Now, maybe one of the gentlemen in the live chat can point me to some, and I'll learn about it, and I'd love to hear it. But how can you have this ministry where you bang on Christians, say they're pagan, and yet you never talk about the nature of God? It shows the topsy turvy of the nature of the priority with a lot of these groups. But here's my point to your question, Corey, is ask them about what they believe about who God is, because that's very fundamental. And so every Christian, regardless of if they understand Hebrew is there, is there, is there Israelism or not, should be able to, by God's grace, with love, defend the doctrine of the Trinity and the deity of Christ, the full deity of Christ. I don't mean the Jesus who's created, who then created everything else. That's what the Jehovah's Witness been believing this whole time. That's what Arius thought. I don't mean the Jesus who's actually an angel, and that's really all he is, is like an exalted angel. I don't mean that none of those Jesuses, because those are another Jesus. And so those Jesus can't say, because if you're not fully God, you can't properly pay for sin because you're going to have your own sin to deal with. Only God can actually deal with the sin problem alone because he alone is perfect. So the key thing is, who is God? You can even say, what is God? If you're talking about the, the nature and characteristics, it's very, very important. Corey, you'll hardly ever find any group who wants to talk about it. So notice I'm trying to tell you to talk to Hebrews lights about it because it matters. It affects everything. But most don't want to talk about the nature of God. Th that seems problematic. Th that's not even high on their priority list. Yeah. Number two is what is the gospel? 
You got to know Ephesians 2, 8, 9, 10, be able to break it down. You got to know multiple passages in Romans 3 and 4, especially. You got to be able to um, uh, look at key passages, uh, really in the whole book of Galatians. That's probably the book most important to be familiar with and have some understanding of what grace is, what faith alone means, and how these things relate to from the from the new covenant to the old covenant. So those are important things and really be able to talk about what the gospel is. Because a lot of these guys will say they believe in the gospel, they'll say they believe in the good news, but then when you listen to them, it's sort of a mixture of different things. They 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 add this, they add that, they add this, they add that. And that's why you got them calling us antichrist because they think we go to ch- church on the wrong day. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, if I would, say if you want to be there on a Saturday, you have Christian freedom to do so. But I also remember multiple verses about don't judge another man based upon the Sabbath. And one day is sacred to one, one another to another. Okay, then why are they trying to push some of the old covenant stipulations, which are, which are no longer required upon us? Yeah, Christ so, is our status. So to me, who is God? What is the gospel? Those are the key things that stick on. But I'm going to tell you what, Corey, they're going to make it hard for you because they want to go to other verses or other things like documentaries but by Ron Dalton Jr. a lot of times. Very difficult to get on those two important topics with these guys a lot of times. Yeah, I, 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 this, is, this is me, guys. Now, you come in contact with the Hebrew Israelite, uh, <laughs> tell them this is what you do. Tell them that I've been listening to Vocab Malone and then they'll go running. They'll, they'll leave you alone. They'll, they'll, they'll scurry. But I would say, just like you're talking to anybody, whether it be a Hebrew Israelite, whether it be a Muslim, whether it be an atheist, whatever it is, um, the first responsibility is still to you to know the scriptures. Paul says it this way. He says, do your best. Now he's speaking to Timothy uh, in this pastoral epistle, but it still applies to us. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling or dividing the word of God truth. And look, the next thing he says, but avoid irreverent babble for it will lead people into more and more ungodly. There comes a point in time when you're talking to someone, you have a conversation and you see it's going nowhere. At that point in time, okay, fine, fine. Uh, we're talking about uh, who this is, who that is, whatever. You know, there comes a point in time where you might just want to back up, but the still, the onus is on you to know the scriptures for yourself um, because it might not be Hebrews like There are other people, there are other cults out there other than Hebrew Israelites. And so it's still incumbent upon you to know the scriptures for yourself, one, for yourself, for your family, uh, and then to spread, you need to be able to spread the gospel. And if you don't know the words, it's going to be kind of hard for you to spread it and to defend it. And so that's why when, when Peter says, always be ready, that means that you have spent some time in it. In other words, you know what the real McCoy looks like. So when someone brings you a, a false, a fake, Someone comes and brings you a $30 bill or a $4 bill, then you understand, wait a second, this says this something doesn't jive right here. And so I think that's the best thing you can do. Um, it's good to study for the sake of studying to be able to prove a point or defend a point, but also study just to enrich yourself. And you, you, if, if, if nothing else, if nothing else, you have become more solidified in your view and belief and understanding of the Bible. So I would just make sure that everyone is also taking their time to study. Uh, I think YouTube, the the Christian channels on YouTube, I think they are wonderful. I like the diversity, even when we disagree. Um, But don't let that uh, be something that you would supplant in place of your own study time, your own reading. Um, It's one thing to hear what he has to say or that person has to say, but also get into it for yourself. You got questions. There's a lot of channels you can turn to or type in questions and so forth. And and then by all means, make your way to Smart Christians Channel. Uh, we, we'll cover these things and we'll have these this, different conversations, and we'll we'll do our best to say, hey, this is what I agree, this is what I don't agree with. This is why. If someone tells you what they believe and don't tell you why, well then, to me, that's a little bit shady and shaky. Uh, We've got a, we've got another live stream later where we're going to cover somebody who makes this statement about these you know, you, you know what we're talking about about these demons and said so that's not biblical. As a matter of fact, the scripture that he uses, you can look at the scriptures and see that's off. It didn't even say what you just said it said. And so you want to be able to do that, just be able to walk through it for yourself, so that no one can lead you astray. Amen. Amen. So we have definitely got to, got to do this. We got up, I think, to almost 500 or to 500 people. Uh, pretty good for the middle of the day because most of my most of the viewers don't come till 
the 4.30 is 5 o'clock time and so forth. So I think that's, that's pretty good. Uh, again, guys, make sure that you go and you check out, not just check out, but subscribe to Vocab's channel. Uh, if you want to know the name of the channel, it's called Vocab Malone. Pretty easy. Uh, or listen, just type in Hebrew Israelite debates. Uh, I promise you his name is going to pop up. It, 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 it can't, YouTube has some kind of contractual agreement to put vocab on there. And so uh, when you go there, make sure that you uh, go to the channel, check him out. You will see, I think he catches a lot of them. And he, and guess what? He's talking to the different groups. He's talking to all these different folks, folks that I, God bless him. <laughs> Me, um, it, I, I probably would not handle it myself the same way, but he is blessed in that regard. The guy is without question uh, a treasure to the body. And so check him out. Also, I'm looking at Alton's, um, Alton's. Make sure you all go and check him out as well. Subscribe to him as well, guys. So listen, guys, I thank you all for being here. Vocab, we definitely, without question, have to do this again. Also, next time you come in Dallas, I want to be out on the streets with you. See what, you know, see you going at these people. So um, do you have anything else to say as we get ready to depart, Vocab? Well, I just encourage everyone to study an interesting concept that we didn't have time to get into, but the concept of the law of Christ, the law of Christ, because I see a lot of the straightway folks saying, well, God, uh, God, uh, you got to keep God's law because you said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Um, uh, often I never hear them talk about the law of Christ. It's mm -hmm. an important thing that's brought up in First Corinthians 9, 21, where Paul says he's under the law of Christ. And then, of course, in Galatians 6, uh, chapter 2, where he says, when you bear one another's burdens, you fulfill the law of Christ. And then you have James, who speaks about the royal law. And that's in uh, James 2, 8, 8 through 13. And the indication seems to be there that it's dealing with Jesus's greatest commands, right? Uh, love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself. And that is the emphasis. And that's what everything in the Old Testament hangs upon. And so that's what we're supposed to do. But all the regulations and requirements that, um, that are, folks are trying to put upon us, that is not what it's all about. Romans 10, 4, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness mm -hmm. to everyone who believes. Galatians 3, 23 to 25. But now before faith came, we were held captive under the law, imprisoned until coming faith would be revealed. So then the law was our guardian until Christ came in order that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer under that guardian. That's very important. We're no longer under a guardian anymore, everybody. Things are different under the new covenant, Ephesians 2, 15, by abolishing the law of commandments expressed in ordinances that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two, so making peace. There's another of uh, other important verses. Now we're not antinomiums. This doesn't mean that we can just go out and do whatever. It doesn't matter. That's never what Christians are saying unless they're antinomiums. And that's a heresy that we've already uh, declared to be a heresy because it is. And so that's not what we're saying. But I want people to really look at that before someone tries to get you and trap you basically by living as if Jesus had never come. Because mm -hmm. Paul says, well, if that's the case, then why did Christ need to die on the cross for our sins? It's like Galatians is there, everybody. So study that concept, law of Christ. And what does that mean for a new covenant believer? And that goes, I hope, for the elders uh, at, at Straightway. I hope they can do that. And I think we can have a fruitful discussion about that. That would be a great debate topic. Uh, what is the law of Christ? That'd be a very fascinating thing to discuss. But uh, yeah, thanks for having me on, Corey. I really appreciate it. Hey, man, listen, uh, all you guys, uh, thank you all for being here.